This is the preamble for a consensual recording at the police station with Chris Watts. Time is 7.08 p.m. Thursday, August 14th, 2018. sorry for what you're going through. I'm, I'm a father too. I'm really, really sorry for what you're going through. Right. But I'm here to help. And I think that um, one of the reasons I wanted to bring you in quickly is because when your memory's fresh of everything that happened, we can ask you a million questions. And unfortunately for you, we're probably going to have to talk to you like 10 times. And here's why. So, um, and I appreciate your willingness to help, of course. Um, so, you know, we're going to say, hey, do you remember what you had for breakfast on Thursday? And you're going to say, uh, Thursday is, you know, Daddy Waffle Day. Well, actually, I, I usually about the same thing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, and, and it's going to be... It's weird. It's, you're gonna, it's, yeah. it's an app that I have yeah. on my phone. So that, oh, okay. Mm. You're pretty fit. Is it like a workout app or something? Yeah, it's, it's, I try to eat about five times a day. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, you're going to say, that's dumb when they ask me that. Then you're going to say eggs, and we're going to say, oh, did you buy them at King Supers? And we're going to say, oh, well, you know, that's weird because we saw a car at King Supers. That's weird. You know, things like that just seem to add up. Um, so, with that in mind, everyone that we're talking to, we're asking if they'll fill this out for us. Okay. Um, it just says, thank you for your willingness to help. Start from the beginning. Please include everything that you can remember and tell us what happened. Okay. Um, so this way, you write it down, we have it forever. We can say, hey, um, you know, where do you think they would go? And you're going to be like, well, I don't know. We're going to say, oh, well, wait, is it possible that, you know, we sit here or something we can look at later? So we find it to be very, very helpful. Okay. Um, so do you mind writing, writing that out for us? Yeah. And then I'll give you um, as much time as you need. Okay. In fact, I'm going to go give these to a few other people while we're doing that, if that's all right. Okay. Are you all right so here alone? Oh, yeah. Just like, okay. just start from like when she got home then. Okay. Yeah. Times um, and everything. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just everything yeah. you can remember. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I'm just going to let you do this. Is that all right? Yeah. Can I put my name up here? Yeah, yeah. Please. like I'm in high school. Yeah. <laughs> name, date. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to make sure that we get these to as many people as we possibly can as quickly as we can. Okay. So I'm just going to leave in here if that's all right. Yeah. Um, and then I'll check back in with Ian in a couple minutes. Okay. Now, just because I gave you, what, three, four pages, I don't know, if, if, if it's not there, it's not there. If you need more paper, we, we got it. Okay. So I'll be right back. All right. Oh, boy, they locked me in. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. Do you have your cell phone on you? Yes. Okay. When you're done, because I'm going to be just right next door giving these to whoever else comes in. Um, do you have Dave's number? Yes. The one you, the, yeah. He just called John. Would you just give him a call when you're done? Okay. Okay. Thanks. Oh, you're wrong. Oh, thanks. You bet. How's it going around here? Oh, not too bad. Okay. Thanks. Going yeah. and wire riders cramp. <laughs> Good, thanks, 
Sorry, how are we doing in here? I'm good. I'm good now. Oh, you done? Yep. Okay, awesome. Cool. So what we're going to do is, all the other people are going to come in, we're going to have them come in here and fill it out, and then if it's all right, you and I are going to go over this and see if there's anything that we can gleam about where you need to go looking for your kids. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay, so we'll leave these in here. Do you want to me? Or one of the more nice person in here. Oh boy. Get this pen in here. Um, let me have that one actually. I'll use that one. Thanks. So, uh, the next few people that come on, I think it'll work. We'll have them start there, and then we'll bring everybody back here when he's done. We'll just keep it going all night. Sounds good. All right. No problem. neighborhood somebody saw something somebody knows where these kids are and I keep saying kids I'm sorry the kids in your wife I should say um, I work these quite a bit and so tonight if I make one of those mistakes when I say kids instead of your wife and kids I apologize it's we work it a lot and so I apologize if something comes out wrong or um, anyway so I know you're going through a lot so we're not going to keep you here all night. Can we go through this? Yep. So, okay. Let's see here. 148 doorbell detected visitor. What does that mean? So the doorbell has a, uh, a camera on it when you get up to a certain proximity and when you ring it, it detects a visitor. Okay. People are already distracting me out here. Oh. <laughs> um, so in fact, you know what? Let's do this. Um, so. I work a lot of stuff like this in bank robberies, and when I talk to a, you know, a witness at a bank robbery, sometimes I find it best for them to just say, uh, I just say, uh, tell me what happened, <laughs> get it all out, and then once you get it out, let's go over it, okay? So we'll just get it all out as far as this. Tell me exactly what you remember, and I'll take notes about where we can go. Okay. Right. So this 1.48 a.m. Let me switch the chairs. Okay. That's when they come knocking. I'm not gonna get use that key. Do you need more water? No, I'm fine. I'm right. Oh, thank you. All right. All right. So, 1:48 a.m. Doorbell detects the visitor. So, when we were um, over at the neighbor's house that the next day, we were looking at his camera as well, and it didn't show anybody walking up to the driveway, which was kind of weird. That's the only reason I put that on there because it showed Nicole dropping her off, but nobody actually walking up to the house was kind of weird, but she was in the house. Okay, and, so, and what time are we talking? This is still 1.48. Okay, okay so, keep going. Uh, 2 a.m., Shane gets into bed with me. 4 a.m., that's when my alarm goes off for work, and I proceed to get dressed, brush my teeth, everything I do upstairs. Okay. About 4.15, that's when I get back, slide right into bed next to her, and start having a conversation with her about having the house, putting the house up for sale, and talking about a separ like actually going, proceeding with the separation. Okay. And obviously it gets pretty emotional, like we're talking about, you know, like we felt this, that this connection was there, like falling out of love, and trying to stay together, maybe just for the kids' sake, but we're realizing that doing like our homework, it's not, most of the time that's not gonna work. Yeah. And it gets pretty emotional because we have two beautiful kids and we have one on the way. So it's just a matter of like, it was very emotional. We were both crying. And at the end, we just said, you know, she said she was going to take the kids to a friend's house for the day. She would be back. Okay. And I was like, okay, that's fine. And that's when I went downstairs, I made my protein shake. You know, it was at 5 a.m. That's when I did that. Okay. I packed my lunchbox, had my oatmeal, chicken. Fill my water jug up. 
515, went outside, back my truck up, was loaded up, had my book bag, my lunchbox, computer, water jug, my big, big clear container. I put big clear containers in my truck so it's easy just to pull out, pull in, just depending on what I'm going to use. And my O-ring kit, and I knew I was going to do some stuffing box rubbers that day, so I got some various open-end wrenches from my toolbox, and I know those would work better than the ones they would give me. Okay. Um, 5.30, that's when I went to work. Okay. And I hadn't heard from Shanann for to, for about two hours there, so at 7.40 I texted her and asked her if she could tell me where the kids were if she took them anywhere. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Let's see. At 12, I texted her again to call me. Nothing. And then about 12, 10 p.m., that's when my doorbell visitor, it read another visitor, and I went, okay. it, it popped up on my phone, and it says it was Nicole. And I try to put it on the, my phone to see if, if like if she's just trying to get in or whatnot. And I hear like she's on the phone trying to, I could t- I could hear her on through my phone saying she's trying to get this and then, So that's when I called her. Yeah, I called her at twelve twenty. See what was going on. She told me that Shannon hadn't responded to any of her calls all day or any of her friends' calls all day. Okay. And that's that's kind of that's very strange. Just mm-hmm. because. I mean, if she doesn't get back to me, that, that's fine. You know, like, yeah. she gets busy with the kids or whatever. Yeah. But if she doesn't get back to her people, like, the people, like, she works with direct, direct sales. Okay. So if she doesn't get back with them, that's strange. Is she the type to answer the phone? For them, yes, okay. like, all the time. Okay. Yeah. Good point. For me, it's just like, hey, you can wait. <laughs> I'll see you later. Okay. Um, so about 1240, uh, a few more efforts from the cold reacher while she's there, like, outside the house. Mm-hmm. And at 1 o'clock, that's when I left, and I was like, all right, I'm on my way down there. Uh, 2 o'clock when I got home, because uh, they, can't, they couldn't get in because the front door had a top latch to keep the kids Who's in. Who's they? Uh, Nicole and the police officer that was there. Okay. Oh, and, oh, right. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so they couldn't get in because the top latch on the car, I mean, top latch on the front door was hinged. And the keypad on the outside does not work to get in the garage, so they had to wait till I got there so I can get the remote opened. Okay. So that's when I got home. I opened the garage door and we went inside the house and looked everywhere. Shanann, Bella, and Celeste, nowhere to be found. Shanann's wedding ring's on her nightstand. Her phone's still on the couch. Her purse is still there. The medicine for the kids is still there. The car and the car seat is still there, and there's no sign of them anywhere. Okay. Uh, three o'clock. Um, for the police officer, detective, uh, Bum, Bum Howard, right? Oh, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't butcher, uh, butcher his name every time. <laughs> um, they're asking Nicole and I, you know, questions about where she could have gone or okay. who she could be with. Um, at about 4 o'clock, the police officer that was there, he was checking the neighbor's security footage. Um, at 5 p.m., uh, the same same police officer, detective, and then a sergeant and another officer, they showed up and they searched the house again. Um, about six o'clock, I've been calling around to anyone that I could, that that may know something. Called mm-hmm. hospitals and hotels. Uh, Seven thirty, as my friend Nick and men showed up to show support, and from then on, it's just friends just showing up. Uh, okay. It shows Lauren, Dave, Jeremy, and ten o'clock is pretty much where I laid down. But I didn't go to bed till probably like two a.m. Just cause fielding texts and calls all night. And, okay. And I was just hoping that I left all the lights on in the house. I was just hoping that I'd get a knock on the door. But yeah, she's back. Happened. Yeah, but nothing happened. What do you think happened? At first, I really thought maybe she was just at somebody's house, just yeah. decompressing. She's blowing off steam. Yeah. But after today, like with the onslaught of all the cars, I mean, all the police cars, all the news, all the canine units, it's making me lean the other direction about someone took her. Okay. But it's just, if someone took her, it would have to have been someone she knew. Because there's there's no sign of anything like being disturbed, broken. Mm-hmm. But like that's the way I'm leaning now. At first, I thought for real she was just decompressing somewhere. Sure. Just, I mean, I thought she was safe, mm-hmm. even though everything in the house was left there. But now it's just after the day with the news crews and everything, it's just it feels more the other direction, and it's freaking me out. Because I have no idea where where they are. Okay. If you could think of anything that we could do to find them, what would it be? I mean, everything that I've exhausted so far is like people that have car seats, because she left the car seats. 
And she would never just, I mean, I mean, Bella could sit in a, in a regular booster chair that because she's about that time. Mm -hmm. Celeste isn't, isn't quite there yet, but all the people that I know that have cards, I mean, they've contacted me. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless it's, I mean, there's, there's definitely a chance there's somebody I don't know. Of being a guy or a girl, I don't. I mean, and she has plenty of friends through like direct sales that I, I've never met. That could have a kid, could have a kid that she they could come and just say, hey, you know, let's go. Like just back up in the back, put them in, let's go. But I wouldn't have their name. I wouldn't know who they are. Okay. And this is like that's what's driving me nuts. It's like when I tell the news crews, like if she's out there, it's like just come home. Like, who would, if, if someone has her, or like not just has her, but if she's at somebody's house and she's just decompressing, it's it's time to come back. Mm -hmm. Because now it, this is real. Okay. This has gone to a different level. Absolutely. Okay. Um, do you have an inkling of if it's good or bad? Yesterday, I, I would have thought that she was safe and she was, it was good that she had been that she would come home. Today, it's more on the other side, because I don't think that she would let it get this far if she was just decompressing somewhere. I mean, she's not talking to anybody. As far as, I mean, any, any people that have reached out to me that I haven't talked to in like a year, mm -hmm. that are friends with her. Mm -hmm. Like one of her like best friends of our Judy lives in Florida. She works in the police department down in Miami. Mm -hmm. And she called me today. Like that's one of her friends she would confide in. Oh. Okay. So and, and she hasn't heard nothing, anything. Nothing. And nobody's heard anything. Mm -hmm. okay. Her parents. I mean, she doesn't like talking to her mom, but still, she would. Her mom calls her enough that she would at least answer once. Yeah. And if she's, I mean, I'm married. I know how it is. If she's hacked off at her husband, would she call her mom? She would call one of the friends that uh, contacted me. Okay. At, at least one of them, because she has she has a close knit group. Okay. But. The, the fact that none of them know anything is very strange because one of them would have said something by now seeing what this is escalated to. Is it possible that her close-knit group isn't close with you and there is somebody who knows where she is right now? I don't think so because I mean Nicole is a very she's very close with Nicole and the way Nicole is acting right now as far as how emotional she is yet there's no way like she knows. What does that mean? There's no way actually, like she would know like where she is if she knew. Oh, so you're saying if Nicole knew. Yeah, Nicole knew, like, the way she's acting right now, she's she's as freaked out as I am. Okay. So there's no way, like, she would know where she is if she knew. Do you, know, do you know Nicole that well? I'm decent. I mean, she's been over at my, our house a good amount of time. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, and you obviously spoke with Nicole. Oh, yeah. And you don't have any weird feelings from her? No, she was she was there at the at the house. Okay. With, like, she was, she was the one that was ringing the doorbell trying to see what was going on. Okay. Um, do you have a sense that the police here, the FBI here, do you have a sense that we have a good enough list of people to call and check with? So I, I think so because I've I've gone through my entire phone. I know Nicole's gone through her entire phone. Amanda, anybody that lives here that knows Shanann, mm -hmm. they pretty much have the same contact list. Okay. So if there's somebody that's not on that on my phone, it's on theirs. Okay. Has somebody? Uh, I think the police have Nicole's phone, or I'm sorry, your wife's phone, right? Yes. And I don't want to pronounce her name wrong, Shanann? Shanann. Shanann? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the police have Shanann's phone. Yep. Do they have your phones? Have they looked at your phones? I don't think so. Okay. Can I run that out and have them look real quick? Yeah. Okay. Is there any password that I'm going to run it to? No, 3307. 3307? 3387. 3387. Mm -hmm. Are there any other phones we can check? Mm -hmm. Okay. When they look at this, what's the best thing that they can do to... I don't know, to say, um, look for these contacts, look for this uh, Instagram, look so, for this Snapchat. You know? So like the only thing on here that's, I would say it's gonna be weird because our contact list is the same. Oh, you guys have a shared contact yeah, like, is it like every, through Google? Yeah, it's like, okay. it's like, I'm, like all the, uh, it, what drove me nuts is that when she like downloaded to the cloud, it multiplied or duplicated, duplicated, duplicated. Oh, I hate that. I hate that. Yeah, yeah. so this, this is the same person over and over Ten again. Ten people over. Oh, okay. So we have the same contact okay. list. So I'm going to run this out. Okay. Um, so 330 or 3387. 3, 3, 3, 3, and I really want them to just 
not physically rip this phone apart, but really dive in. Okay. And is that, are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you, I'll just, I'm going to hand this off to somebody. Okay. All right. I'll be right back. Are there any other phones at home we can look at? That's all the ones I know of. That's hers and mine. Um, computers. She has a laptop, but she barely uses it. Okay. Where's the laptop? In the office. At home? Yep. Okay. Um, I think that I'm sorry that I'm catching up here. This always happens. Um, the police are the first people to get a call. Then when it's serious like this with missing kids, then a day or two later we come in. So I'm sorry I'm playing catch up. Um, it's always good to repeat it though. So laptop at home, does it have a password? If it, I don't think so. It might, but I, that's the one she uses. Okay. Yeah, it just stays in her office. Do you have any idea? I, I have an idea of what the password could be. Okay. It's like 428-4915, capital S, lowercase w. That's, that's their main password. 428-4915, capital S, lowercase w. Yeah. And we'll probably just have you bring that invoice. Is that okay? Okay, so they don't have it now, the cops don't have it now. Okay, um, so laptops, <sighs> any other, um, like a Fitbit, is there um, tablets? iPad, but I have not found that. Does she have it? I have not found it yet if she has it, but I haven't seen her in the house. Okay, so possibly she has it? Possibly. Oh, okay. When did you buy that? Oof, that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and so is it a full-on iPad? Like, yep. Um, it, you could use it to, like... Um, a Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Could you use it to navigate to an address? You could text from it. Oh, okay. So then if it's possible and she has it and she's somewhere hurt or somewhere that we can't find her, she can't... In other words, could we somehow track that? Does that have GPS? It has to be connected to Wi-Fi for okay. it to actually... Oh, so it's not like a phone then. It's a... No. Okay. She has a watch as well, but I have not found that. She has a, like a... Apple Watch. Apple Watch, okay. I've Do you know where that it. is? I have not found it. It's not, okay. it's not on the charger. And it's not at your house that you can tell? Okay. Um, do you think the password for the iPad's the same? No, it's probably going to be 2385. 238. Is that common for her? Yes. And on a four-digit it is. Okay. And what about for her Apple Watch? 2385. 2385, okay. I don't have an Apple Watch. Is that one where you have to unlock it usually? Okay. And does she usually have a password? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, On her phone, it's different because it's a six digit, but... Okay, what's your phone one? It's going to be 013119. Is that a birth date or something? Or? Oh, the next baby. Oh, due date. Due date. Okay. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Um, so if she's... And again, this is probably something that the cops in the other room know about. If she's due in January... She's four or five months pregnant? And she was 14, 15 weeks. Okay. All right. Did you guys know the sex of the baby? We weren't going to tell anybody yet. But you do know it? Mm -hmm. Okay. That she knows it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's finish this, and then we'll get into um, more of this. Okay. So how else can we track her? Does she have another phone that you know of? That's the only phone I've ever seen her use. Okay. What's the phone number? 910 uh -huh. 850 Three two eight six. Okay. Um, so you know, strap on your CSI hat. Uh, you can imagine the FBI has some pretty cool tricks and toys and everything. Is there anything you can think of that we should be doing that we're not? Honestly, everything that I saw today was like it was it threw me on a whirlwind. I didn't think all that was going to happen. So that everything that happened today, I thought you guys were like spot on. Okay. Um, is there anything that a friend has said? Oh. Has the FBI done this? Has a well, you probably didn't know the FBI was involved until no. an hour ago. Yeah. Um, is there any good ideas that your friends have had saying, "Man, they gotta try this. They gotta do this." A lot of people have asked about Amber Alerts, but I'm not sure okay. like why that. I'm not sure like I'm sure you know Amber Alerts have to deal with like all right if you know someone has taken a kid, but since right. the last person you saw was with the mom, yeah. and you don't think you know, everybody's gone. Yeah. That's probably why the Amber Alerts not really yeah used in this respect. Well, they did a, they did a press statement, so. Um, Amber Alerts are a little bit different. Um, one thing that helps Amber, Amber Alerts is cars. 
You know, when you're driving down the freeway and you say, missing person, look for this car. What car do we look for? And that's the only car she has is the one that left in the garage. The Lexus? Mm -hmm. And that's what you drove here tonight? Yep. Okay. Do you have any other cars that you drive? I just my work truck. Okay. Um, Lexus. Does the, le oh, the Lexus is here. Okay. How could she have left the house? On On, only way she could have left the house is if somebody picked her up, but it would have to have been from the back. Because there's the camera in the front where the neighbor, the way it faces the driveway, it would have picked that up. The only thing it picked up was me leaving at like 5.26. Okay. How do you know? Is it your camera? It's the neighbor's camera. Oh, did he tell you? Yeah, we, all, we were all over there watching it okay. with the officer. Okay. All right. It just showed me loading up my truck. Oh. Um, is it on all the time? His camera's on all the time, yep. Okay. And all that saw was you leaving? Yep. That it didn't show her coming home? I didn't show her walking in, no. Okay. But she she was in the house. Yeah, home. obviously. So I, I, I was just like a... I'm just trying to think. So the camera, is it possible that it doesn't catch everything? Like a motion detector? It, from what I saw, I think, like, he showed me other, like, examples, but it was picking up, like, minuscule things uh -oh. in there. Like, it was, like, it didn't take much to, like, just get it to start recording. Oh, so it probably is a motion detector then. It's yeah. your start points. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So then there's his camera and your security system. Yeah, my doorbell camera right there. Your doorbell camera. And the only thing that was strange about mine that morning was that when I left, it said garage door two remained open. When you left? Were you parked in the garage when you left? I was pulled out and it, hit the, and it said, I thought it shut. Oh, okay. And it said main garage door to open while, when I went back and looked at all the history. And Nick Nicole said that it was shut when she got there. Okay. But it said it was, because on my, on my notifications, it'll say something's left open, but it won't say when it shut. Oh, so you got a notification that was open mm -hmm. after having, after when you thought you shut it? Yep. Okay. Next, yeah, I looked back and I saw it shutting. Okay. Um, kids, do they have any security little watches? Mm -hmm. You know, some they have the call home button? Nothing like that? Nothing like that, yeah. No iPads? Mm -hmm. How old were they? Four and three. Oh, they're pretty young. Okay. Anything else you can think of? Honestly, like, we've exhausted, like, every option, every friend that we know. Okay. That could have, like, that could have helped her. Okay. Um... So we talked about her decompressing a few times. Where would she do that? She would have to go to her friend's house to do that. She wouldn't just go anywhere, not with the kids. The hotel? Would, I've checked, and if she, had, if she had any cash on her, I'm not sure like how much she would have had on her. She doesn't, usually doesn't carry much cash, and the okay. cash she had in her wallet was from the coal the previous day. From who? From the coal. Oh, okay. She told me that was the cash she gave her. Okay. When we saw her when we found her purse. For what? I don't know, that was, I'm not sure. She didn't even tell me. Okay. But um, that was on the cash out in her wallet. And is that still at the house, you said? Yeah. Okay. So is her license in the lot? Yeah. So she's got no cash that we know of, no license, no phone. Um, anything about the clothes in the closet, the hamper, the drawers that makes you think? She packs some boots, she's going to the mountains. Like she has so many clothes in that in that closet. Like it's it'd be hard to really tell if she took a little amount. Okay. I mean, if she took a big amount, it'd be pretty obvious. But like a little amount, you would never know. Okay. All right. She does like say like that whole wall, and then the bottom and the other side. Okay. If you take this room, and it's about the size of it. A woman with a lot of clothing? You don't say. No. Okay. Shoes? Anything about the shoes that you think? She has a whole shoe closet. <laughs> So there's nothing obvious that screams at you. She's no. preparing for this type of activity. Okay. Um, and the girls, the kids' clothes too. It's, there wasn't a, enough that was there that I saw missing. Okay. So, um, all right. So I know it's hard to talk about. Um, you mentioned that there was a hard conversation that the two of you had about Separation. Uh, your marriage and separation. Now that you've had a little bit of time to think, looking back on that conversation, um, can you connect the dots between both of you being upset and crying, and here we are, and now she and the kids are gone? What do you, what do you think about? I think about, like, 
did I cause this? Like, did I make her feel like she needed to leave? And, like, did she really feel, like, the things she was saying, did she really feel the same? Did she really feel like, all right, the disconnection? Did she really feel all that? Or was she just saying it? Like, maybe, like, us falling out of love, did that, was that really registering her at that point in time? Or did it register after I left to go to work? And then she's just like, you know, I'm just going to leave. Okay. It's like, I don't measure because she laid back down. Okay. She was still there when I left. Okay. But, like, maybe she sat there and, and thought about it. Like, do I really need to stay here right now? Okay. Like, if he doesn't love me, maybe I should just go. Can you really get into that conversation with me? And what I want to know is, um, you obviously have a very deep relationship with her. She's your wife. But it's going to be easy for me to listen to what that was said and maybe think that there are some clues about maybe she did just lay down and, and cry a little bit longer and something happened to her. Or maybe she did get frustrated and she left. So let's, can we recreate that conversation? Mm -hmm. So tell me what happened. So I crawled back in bed. So sorry, let's start from, um, she gets home late at night. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start from that point. Okay, so she got home about 2 a.m. And were you already home? Oh yeah, I was, I was passed out. Okay. Yeah, so like I, I, could, I felt her get in the bed, that was okay. about it. But about 4 a.m., that's when my alarm, <clears throat> that's when my alarm went off to go to work. Okay. So that's when I got ready and everything. And so from, she gets in at 2, alarm goes off at 4, okay? Mm -hmm. and, you, and you were sleeping that whole time? Oh yeah. Okay, so the conversation hadn't started? No. Okay. Well, no. So about when my alarm goes off, that's when, after I get ready for work, I call back in bed and we have that conversation. So you wake up at 4, mm -hmm. from at four, then what until you start the conversation? I uh, get dressed, get my get my clothes on, brush my teeth, deodorant, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Shower? No. Okay. Shower up. Yeah, night right before. Okay. What do you do for a living? I work in the oil and gas. Okay. So then it doesn't matter if you go to work without a shower. <laughs> okay. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> all right. It's gonna be bad anyways. Yeah. So then you wake up, you get ready. I'm sorry I interrupted you. You're fine. Um so then so then what time are we talking about when you're ready to talk with her? About 4.15 or so. Okay, and so she was asleep from the time she got in from 2 to 4, mm -hmm. or 4.15. You wake up at 4, 4.15, you're ready. Okay, and then 4.15, you start talking. Mm -hmm. Why do you talk at 4.15 in the morning? I felt like I needed to talk to her face to face. Because, okay. like, I wanted to say something. Much, um, I, I, like, when she was in Arizona, like, I didn't want to do it through a text. I didn't want to do it through a call. I was okay. like... I got back in bed. I was like, I needed to, I needed to talk to her about this because she had told me, she had told me like when she was when she was gonna fly back, that she wanted to get up with me so she could take a shower. She wanted to get the airport off of me. What do you mean when she got back? When she flew back in from Phoenix. Yeah. Okay. So she told you, let's have a talk. No, she wanted to get up with me so she could take a shower to get the airport off of her because she was going to oh. fly. her flight was delayed. Oh, okay. Her flight was supposed to, was supposed to get in 11, but okay. it was 8 to 11. Okay. And so, so did she call you or did she text you? I think there was a call Okay. on that one. All right. And then so at 4.15, what happens? That's when I crawled back in bed and I, was, I woke her up. Okay. And then I proceeded to talk to her about how I was feeling, about how I felt like what's been going on with us for the last... What, what she's seen in like last six weeks because we were, she was in North Carolina and I was mm -hmm. down there just the last week. But from what, just being apart and just like figuring out who people are. Mm -hmm. Like the best, honestly, like the best way for people to really find out who they are is to spend time apart. I agree. And it's kind of just like, you can just see yourself. And, the, and then on the last week, that's when I went back to North Carolina and I was there for the last week there. Okay. And when we were together, we could feel like it, was, it wasn't there, that spark. Mm -hmm. I know it's kind of cliche, but that spark sure. wasn't there anymore. Mm -hmm. And on that night, I told her, well, that morning, early that morning, mm -hmm. I told her, like, the disconnection, it's, it's there. Like, it's not going away. Like, the connection we had when, in the beginning, mm -hmm. it's not there anymore. It's okay. like, I don't feel like the love we have is there anymore. Okay. And it's just like, I don't feel like, I mean, if we want to stay together for the kids, I'm not sure if that's going to work. Mm -hmm. Like bringing us, what you told her? Yes. Okay. Like having another baby, bringing us in this relationship, do you think this is going to work mm -hmm. with us being together or separation? I think it's going to be the best. 
possible route for us. And that's when like all the crying and everything proceeded. And it was just, it was very hard just, just to talk, talk about that. Mm -hmm. But I needed to do it face to face. Okay. And I needed like, I needed to see her face like while I did it. I couldn't uh, text, phone, yeah. whatever. I needed to be face to face and be able to see her and know that she was gonna be at least reciprocating back to me. Oh, what did she say? She said that it was, I mean, it was, she wants, she wanted to kind of work on it, mm -hmm. but if that's the way I was feeling, then she respects that. Okay. And she said that most of the time when you have kids and you have a relationship where people, like, they don't, they don't love each other anymore, they fall out of love, this connection, that having kids, even bringing a new baby into the into the equation, doesn't always work as well as keeping like you know the couple happy and the kids happy. It's like it almost is like better if you're right. yours mm -hmm. on different different sides. Yeah, you don't want to spend your whole marriage disliking each other and faking it for the kids. Yes, no, that's that's one thing. Okay. Is that accurate? I don't want oh, to. That, that's that's totally accurate. Okay. I mean, you, you don't want to be it. You don't want to be the people parading around with like a mask on when their kids are around, and then when the kids go to sleep, you just go your separate ways. Okay. It's like, that's what I don't want. Okay. And that's why that's why we talk. That's why we we're talking about that separation that night. Okay. And that's why that's why I got so emotional right there. Okay. Emotional for you too. Oh yeah, I was bawling my eyes out. Okay. Um. So then, as a result, so then, how long did that conversation last? It lasts so about four fifteen when we started. Cause we talked about the house as well. Okay. What did you, you say about the house? Like we needed to sell the house. Like there's no way like we can stay in this house and have another kid mm -hmm. and be able to just keep everything afloat. Mm -hmm. And she's like, "Well, where do you want to move to?" I was like, "Well, we can move to Brighton. We can move. Are you familiar with the area?" Kind of, yeah. Okay. So we can move to Brighton, we can move to Longmont, we can move like, you know, wherever. Mm -hmm. Somewhere that's cheaper. Okay. And she was like, well, because she had already contacted the uh, realtor the week before through email. Oh. To, to see, like, what she thought. And that's when, like, I, I actually contacted Ann that day. Like, a little, like, pretty much probably about 8 o'clock that day. Who's Ann? The realtor. Oh, okay. Yeah. And asked her, you know, like, if we can get the ball rolling. Like, see what you thought. So you said your wife called a week before to the realtor? Emailed her. Okay, so then this conversation early in the morning wasn't a shock to either of you or no. a surprise. It was the next step yeah. in the long conversation you had mm -hmm. to have leading yeah. up to. Okay. Yeah, well, this was not like a, just like way up like a big bang theory yeah. type thing. It was just yeah. like, this was, Okay. It, was, it that's why it was just an emotional conversation. Sure. Like, because it wasn't just like, like, come out of nowhere left field type of thing like we knew like something wasn't we knew about what we want to do with the house we knew like what what's going on with it like we knew something was okay. is it accurate to say that then the time when you were away from each other when she was in North Carolina the time when she was in Arizona maybe the two of you knew that that could have been time you were talking and so when you finally get together it's we can't wait another second we're going to talk mm -hmm. is that right and tell me if it's wrong. No, no, you're, you're okay. right. Okay, so then uh, the conversation starts at 4.15. You talk about each other and your marriage. You talk about the house, then what? And that's when the conversation ends, and we're talking. That's when she said she's going to take her friends, or take her and her friends to, uh, take her and the kids to her friend's house. Who's, who's, which friend? That's when she did, she did not say. That's so why. she did say, I'm taking the kids to a friend's house. Yeah. Are you sure she said that? Yes. You're positive? Yes. Okay. That's good. Um, now we're back to the blowing off steam yeah. probability, which we like, right? Yeah, that's what I like. Okay. Um, so let's, you know, if we're gonna play the DVR, let's rewind five minutes. So we're at the house, you're talking about the house, you're saying this isn't gonna work with the kid, we're gonna sell this house. Then how do you remember what led to her talking about the kids? As far as like taking them to her friend's house? Yeah, like what, what conversation did you guys have? That's when I rolled out of bed, and that's when she, she pretty much she told me, like, I'm taking the kids to a friend's house today, okay. and I'll be back later. Are you sure she said she'll be back yes. later? On a scale of 1 to 10, how, how positive? That's a 10. A 10? Yeah. Okay. So she said, I'm going to take the kids to a friend's house, but I'll be back later. Why? 
I, from what I just told her, that doesn't make I, sense I, though, because she, you'd be at work, why would she have to leave? That's the thing, like, why, I'm not sure why she wanted to go somewhere. Okay. But that's what she wanted, like, maybe she didn't want to be in that house after what we were just talking Fair about. Fair enough, you just talked about, yeah, it's no longer in mentally, emotionally her house then. Okay. okay, so let's focus on, I'm going to take the kids to my friend's house, what does that mean? Hopefully it's someone that she trusts. Hopefully it's someone that she knows pretty well, and hopefully maybe they have a kid that Bella and Celeste can play with. But you have no idea who that would be? Because we have exhausted all those information, all those people. Okay. Is that, does that surprise you? Because I don't know your wife, but maybe that's something that's in her wheelhouse. Does that surprise you that she did, did said that and did that? It doesn't surprise me that she went somewhere. Like, she said she was, it might, could have been a play date. Okay. But she was very vague in the fact that she just said she was going to a friend's house. Okay. And didn't say who. Okay. That's why I text her, like, if you can tell me, like, where the kids are. What time did you text her? That was seven, seven forty. Okay. And no word, no word from her, obviously. No, no. Okay. So then we're at the. Sh I'm gonna take the kids. I'm gonna go to a friend's house. You sure she didn't say I'm gonna take them somewhere to a hotel or to mm -hmm. a? Oh there, no, there was you're no. You're positive if you said to a friend's house, yes. and not just someone's house, but a friend's house. Yeah, because like if it if it was a hotel, I would have definitely asked the question like, why are you going to a hotel? Yeah. Okay. That, that wouldn't, that would, yeah. Where can we look to find friends that you might not know about? Honestly, Facebook's the only place. Facebook? Because okay. that's the one she frequents. Okay. That's the only place. What's her Facebook account? Or her username? I mean, it's a Shenan Watts. Just regular Shenan Watts? Well, they, they have access on her phone. S-H-A-N? A-N-N. -N. A-N-N. -N. And so... They can, I think they can log into the phone, right? I think they're in her phone, right? Oh yeah, they okay. just gotta hit the icon and it's right there. This one's right there, they can, they can, they can do whatever it. they want. And they can, okay, all right. Yeah, it doesn't take much, it's always logged in. Okay. Um, doesn't she do something online? Doesn't she have an online presence or something? It's with Thrive, the direct sales business. Is that like her job? Yeah. So, so it's called what? Thrive. Thrive. Yeah. The company's called Lavelle, but the the, pro the company's called Lavelle. Lavelle. Yeah. L e hyphen v e l. L e hyphen v e l. Okay. Yeah, but the the product's called Thrive. Okay. What is it? It's a probiotics, prebiotics, uh, vitamins and minerals. It's okay. Not, it's all plant based stuff. It's it's work works very well. Di dietary supplementary. Okay. And what does she do for that? She's a promoter. Okay. Sales? Yes. Okay. Is this a, um, I think I've heard of Thrive. Is this like you try to sell it personally to people you know? Okay, so she doesn't have a storefront that she works at? No, no, it's okay. all cloud-based. Okay, home-based. She yep. can work from home. Oh, she can work anywhere. And so where would be a list of contacts at Thrive that we could go start talking to people? Oh, we, we've already gave them all to them. Like everybody that she contacts through Thrive, they have them in that the phone. Have yep. In that phone? Mm -hmm. Through what? An app? No, just like all the people that she contacts throughout the day. Okay. Like from Addie and Sam, and they're all in there. Addie and Sam, who are they? Addie Maloney, one of her uh, leaders back east. Uh, oh, okay. Sam Paisley, another leader. Someone who's supporting her sales. Yeah. yeah. What about people who, because she's in sales, what about customers she tries to reach out to that she doesn't even know? How does she do that? Messenger. You message strangers? They, she, either it's her Facebook po like page is, uh, I guess it's public. Okay, so she has friends on friends on Facebook yeah. that might someday think that they want Thrive that can reach her. Mm -hmm. How else does she do it? It's mainly just through Facebook. Through Facebook? Yeah, like if she has any, she might do it on Instagram every once in a while. She'll like sync them both so that okay. it goes to both, but. Facebook and what was it, Instagram? Yeah. Okay, what's your Instagram username? I have no clue. You have no idea? No. Okay. It might just be Shanann Thrives. Shanann with a uh, underscore and Thrives. Okay. So you don't do Thrive? I do, but she kind of runs it. Okay. Do you do it separately from her then? It's it's a different team, but okay. it's, I'm under her. Okay. Like I signed, it's like she signed me up under her. Okay. So whatever I do helps her. Right. Okay. What else were we not thinking of? So let's continue with, I'm gonna to go to my friend's house. Then what happens? 
that's when I go downstairs, uh, make my protein shake, get my lunch, everything ready. Because you're not going back to bed at this point? No, it's, okay. I gotta go to work now. And this is somewhere near five? 5.15. Okay. And then that's when I go out, get my truck, load everything in it, and 5.30 I'm, okay. or about what the neighbors think said, about 5.26 I'm gone. Okay, and she's still at the house then? Yes. Are you sure? Yeah, because I, I mean, she never came back downstairs. And, and explain your house to me. Da do you leave through downstairs? I leave, I, yeah, go downstairs and you leave through the garage. So then this conversation happened upstairs? Yes. In the master bedroom? Yes. Okay. Um, and you're sure she didn't come down? Like, once I was in the garage, I was in the garage, so I didn't see anything after that. Did you see her car in there? Yes. Okay, and you left when her car was in there? Yep. So it's clear she's in there. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to determine if there's any other time she could have disappeared. And then, so from 5.30 then, what? That's when I, I went to work. Okay. All right. And 7.40 is the next time I texted her. And why'd you text her then? I was I hadn't heard from her. And I was just seeing if she knew, like, where, if, or just seeing where she went. Texted Shanann, right? The yep. Shanann? Yeah, and asked if she could tell me where she was taking the kids. Oh, okay. So at this point, it's two hours later, and you're thinking, I wonder where she's going. Yeah. Okay. And is that text on your phone? Yes. Okay. Uh, then all the way, what happened between 7.40 and noon? No, I was working. I was outside working. Okay. Uh, noon, texted Shanann to call me. And that's going to be on your phone too? Okay. 12.10, doorbell visitor. That's when Nicole was at the door at the door, and it pinged on my phone. Okay. What's she doing there then? Oh, then 10 minutes later, you called Nicole to see what was going on. And she told me she couldn't get a hold of Shanann either. And that her shoes were next, whose shoes? Shanann's shoes? Yep. Were next to the door, and her car was in the garage next to the door, inside or outside? Inside. She could, there's like a little, like a little small rectangular window next to the oh, door. Oh, okay. You can see right in there. Do you, does that mean anything to you? Does Shanann, or her shoes always by the door? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, when you come in the house, does she usually come in the front door? Most of them, unless she drives in. Okay. Then she goes into the garage. Okay. But that was she, just from the previous night when she came in. Oh, okay. So then, let's think about this for a minute. If she comes in, drives in, with, what's the, your other car, Lexus? Yep. She drives in the Lexus, comes in. She comes in the garage door that way, if she drives in the garage. Then, but since Nicole dropped her off that previous night, she came from the front door. Oh, someone else is driving. The yes. Lexus is already there. The Lexus is already there. Okay, so then that makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, you, see, you see what we're trying to do? We're trying to be like, did she walk out or was she taken out, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so then it makes sense that her shoes are still right there. Mm -hmm. But she's obviously not wearing those shoes. Okay. All right, let's keep going. 1240, a few more efforts by Nicole to reach her. How do you know? Because that's when I was, she was still at the front door. And oh. I was, I was oh, calling. to reach her at the front door. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 1 p.m. I'm now on my way home to check on my family. Uh, is that just because you're worried with based on the conversation yeah. from Nicole? Had the police contact you by then? No. Okay. Two, but, I arrive. Sorry, go ahead. But uh, Nicole said she was probably going to call the cops. Okay. All right. Now, so it sounds like Nicole's pretty worried. Mm -hmm. More worried than you. Well, so I, I, once, once she couldn't get anything out of her and nothing was going on at the house, I was like, all right, I got to go home. But it sounds like Nicole was more worried. Yeah, because like... Most of, like, if she doesn't text me, like, I understand that. Okay. Like, sometimes that happens. Okay. But for her not to get back to her okay. gr direct sales group, okay. that was very unorthodox. Okay. And you had a pretty tough morning with her. Yeah. So she's, again, decompressing, as yeah. you said. So it's okay that she's not texting you, maybe, but you're going to come home and check in yeah. just in case. Mm -hmm. But Nicole's freaking out. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. And and I'm I'm walking myself through this. You tell me. No, no, no. That's not what happened. No, I mean like she, she was like for her not to get back to her friends like that. Like that's not normal because like she'll get like tons of text messages throughout the day from okay. direct sales. All right. Like if she doesn't get back to me, I I just assume that she's busy. Okay. I'm now on my way home to check my family. Two p.m. I arrive home. Open the garage door. How? I have my uh, uh button. Okay. It's in your truck? Yeah. Okay. And get inside the house. Shanann, Bella, and Celeste. Who are Bella and Celeste? That's what my kids. Okay. Oh, are not in the house. Oh, okay. Shanann's wedding ring is in on her nightstand. Nice her phone is on the couch. Her purse is still here. 
the medicine for the kids is still here. The car with the car seats are still here. There is no sign of them anywhere. Frederick police officer and detectives are asking Nicole and I questions about where she could have gone or who she could be with. How did that go? I mean, we try to go through from what we could have what we could gather like where she could have gone okay as far as like because what we saw in the house it didn't really make, make sense okay but that's when we're that's when we're just like call it start look through the phone and just kind of call around and once we found the phone and, and nicole knew what the passcode was just kind of load it up and see what what transpired and obviously there was like 50 something text messages that came that would like pop through okay all right because the phone was off okay what do you mean the phone was off? It was off. When you found it, it was off, off? Off. Was the battery dead? No. What do you make of that? I have no clue. Like, why was it off and why was it not with her? It's weird, right? Because if you're saying that she does a ton of texting and marketing and sales and calling certain people back, okay. How would it turn off? You'd have to turn it off. Okay. Because it wasn't dead. It was like 50% or so, I think. Are you sure? Okay. And it was on the couch. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that? It's, oh, usually it's not right by her nightstand. Okay. That's usually where it always is. Nightstand in the bedroom? Yeah. Okay. Anything else about that? No, that, that is weird that it's, it was sitting like on the couch cushion like right there. Okay. So, can we back up a tiny bit? You come home, no one had been in the house? No. Okay. No one could get in the house, is that right? Yeah, unless you had a garage door. Okay. Her. And that's how you got in? So I got in. So at this point, you get there. Are the police there at this point? Yes. So you, the police, Nicole, that's it. Her son. Her son. What's her son's name? I think it's Nick. I think, oh, I think his name's Nick. Nick. And so you and Nicole aren't besties, per se. You and Nicole. Oh, no, like, we're, I mean, we're friends, but yeah, the, my wife and her are, are okay. really good friends. Okay. And so Nick... You don't spend much time with Nick? No. Okay. Why is Nick there? That he was just with her, with his mom. Okay. Is there anything weird about Nicole and Nick? Not that I really think of. Do you think anything about your wife not being around is, has anything to do with Nicole and Nick? I, I would hope not. Because, <laughs> I mean, like, Nicole is one of her good friends. I don't think they could have done, like, I don't think they could have done anything, like, as far as, like, helping her get out and then being so emotional when they couldn't find her. I don't think, like, they, I don't think they could be capable of that. So then they're, they're at home, um, police officers there, mm -hmm. um, then walk me through that. So as we go through the house, we're Did all- Did you immediately go through the house? Oh, like I open the garage door and I just, I just go into the house. I'm, I'm, I'm looking, like I just go in the garage door and I'm looking. Is the police officer saying, hey, let me talk to you for a minute? No. No, okay. What's, no. The, what's the vibe like? I just, I just, I go up there, shake his hand, but I'm like opening the garage door at the same time. Okay. And then I go through, and then they're waiting at the front door. I go in, open that up, and then they come in. Oh, so they didn't go in the garage door with you? Okay. Well, they, they went in the garage. They didn't come in the way I did. All right. So then they, everybody goes in. Okay, and then what? I run upstairs, and I look in the bedrooms. Okay. And because that's where she would be? Mm -hmm. That's where I, I would expect. So is this a standard house, upstairs bedrooms, downstairs living area? Yep. Okay. And there's one office downstairs. Okay. And then, and so then upstairs, then what? I'm going to Bella's room, going to Celeste's room, playroom, master bedroom. I'm looking everywhere, like bathrooms and nothing. Okay. And then? I found the night, found the wedding ring right there on the nightstand. And then. Right they, then? Yeah. Okay. Is they, that weird? She only takes it off if she covers her hair. Okay. And I, she'd already covered her hair like a week before, so. Okay. I don't. That was just like probably a result of our conversation. Oh. I would think. Okay. And then Nick finds her phone on the couch. 
And why did he find her phone on the couch? What's he looking for there? Uh, I don't know. He was he was looking for uh, clues. Just, uh, clues. Just okay. looking, just looking around too, and just happened just like to run across it right there on the couch in the, in okay. the kitchen. So he found it. It's not as though you were calling it to find it. He just found it. Yeah. Okay. Then what? Saw the um, so that we told the officer that we found the phone. We turn it on. Nikki gets the puts the passcode in. Because it was a four-digit passcode before, and it was a six-digit this one this time. So and now, like, it's oh one thirty one nineteen. Yeah, she knew her friend's passcode. Yeah, I didn't. Because it used to be two three eight five, but when she changed it to six, how did Nikki know? Maybe she knew it over the weekend because I'd never seen a six-digit passcode on her on her phone. Is that normal to you that Nicole might share her passcode with somebody? I wouldn't think so. Has do you know her to have done that before? No, because only she's only told me her passcode before. Like her, I mean, her phone's her lifeline. So okay, are she close with Nicole? I mean, uh, she's I mean decently close. How long do they know each other? Probably, probably at least over a year. How did they meet? Uh, when her mom, when Shanann's mom lived here, they uh, her Shanann's mom worked at a she was a hairdresser, and Nikki was like one of the managers. Oh, Nicole, sorry. One okay. Of the and then did she, did she then get her hair done there or something by Nikki? No. Okay. No, it was just Shan's mom and Nicole were friends, and then Shan got Nicole into the Thrive, and oh, okay, went from there. All right. So now we're at finding the phone, Nicole unlocking the phone, then what? Waiting for the everything to load up and watching all the text messages pop up, phone calls, pop, missed calls pop up, and go from there. And what were they? It was just people call, at, asking, like, are you okay? Where are you? Type things. Okay. All right. Um, okay, then what? The police officer, he looks at the phone, just kind of just kind of look, looks through this to see, like, if anything looks, you know, on up any of the text messages. Mm -hmm. And then um, I walk downstairs, and I'm looking around down there, seeing if I see anything at all. Okay. I don't, I mean, nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. And then... Um, I think that was at, yeah, at four o'clock. That's when um, cause the neighbor, cause the neighbor, yeah, the officer, I went over to the neighbor's house to see if he saw anything, and whose idea was that? I think it was the officer because okay. he just went over there. Um, okay. and then that's when the uh, neighbor called him back over to show him he uh, he had some stuff from the other night. Okay, just show him like whatever he had, like like put motion on it. Okay, who originally called the police? Uh, Nicole. Okay. And is that the time when you're telling me you're coming home and she's freaking out? She said that she told me she was going to call the police, but I thought, okay, I'm coming home. It's like, let me, let, let me look through everything. Let's see what's going on here. And I, on my way home, I, that's when she called me and said, the cops are here. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Frederick police officer and detectives are asking Nicole and I questions about where she could have gone or who she could be with. 4 p.m. Police check neighbor security footage and question them as well. Okay. Have we talked about that? Is that what we were? Okay. That's where we're at. Uh, anything else about that? No, I mean, it just shows Nicole dropping her off, but her not walking up. And it shows me loading my truck up at okay. about the time I told you I left. Okay. Officer, detective, and sergeant come by to search the house and ask some more questions. How'd that go? They just uh, had me sign the paperwork to search the house. Okay. And I just waited outside and let them okay. go through the house to do some missing persons warrant, I guess. Sure. Okay. And did they find any other clues? No. Okay. Um, begin calling around to anyone I know that could know something or maybe see Shanann. Calling locals, hospitals, and hostels as well. 7.30 p.m. Friends, Nick and Amanda come by to show support. Okay, so wait a minute, begin good. So 6 p.m., begin calling around to anyone I know that could know something or maybe seen Shanann. What happened there? Same thing, like, everybody that I've talked to, it's just like, they haven't heard from her, they haven't seen her, they, nothing. Call a hot, what's up? Who's helping you make these calls? That's just me, just at this point. That's were you by yourself? I was by myself. I'm sure Nicole and other people were doing that while they were gone. Okay. Because they were gone at this point. Where did Nicole go? Back to her house. Back to her house. She was there when they came back to search the house. 
Nicole was? She was parked outside. When is this five, 5 o'clock? Yeah, she was parked outside. Okay. Did she come in and help them? No. Why not? Well, because they told me to wait outside. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Is there any weapons in your house? No. Okay. Um, if we wanted to bring a lot more people with a lot more tools and tricks to your house, um, could we do that tonight? It's up to you. Okay. Um, I was gonna stay at a friend's house tonight. I was on my way over there okay. tonight, but that's up to you. You're gonna stay there at a friend's house? I was. Okay. If we were to get into your house without you there, how would we do it? Punch the passcode in the front, 2385. Okay, and that's the garage passcode? No, that's the front door. And it, I thought you said there's a latch or something preventing you from getting in. I know, but if you don't latch it, it's... And is it unlatched now? Yeah. Okay. Um, we might think about that. I think it's a good idea. All right. What do you think? I was just gonna go to a friend's house because I could stay another. I couldn't stay there. last night. I couldn't even sleep there. Who? What friend's house? Uh, Nick and Amanda. Oh, is that her friends or your friends? They're both of our friends. Okay. I run with Nick. Okay. And when you say her, is that your wife or is that Nicole's? My wife. Your wife's. Yeah. Shanann's friends. Yeah. Okay. Nick and Amanda. Um, I think they're waiting outside right now. Actually. Oh, are they? <laughs> were they the ones I saw on TV? More than likely. Okay. Had um, one bald guy. Young young kid with the brim ball cap. Yeah. Colorado or something, yep. maybe? That I was think. Nick. That was Nick? Okay. I thought Nick was... No, wait, Nicole's... What's Nicole's son? Nick. So there's two Nicks now? Yeah. Okay, so Nicole's son is Nick. Yeah. And your friend is Amanda. Who's Amanda also... and Nick. Yep. Are they married? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Oh, gosh, I should say, like, a Nick and Amanda Thayer. But that was... Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I know the Thayer name. They showed up at the house at some point, right? Yep. Okay. All right. Good friends? Mm -hmm. And no reason to worry about that? No. How do you and Nicole, how do you and Shanann know them? The Amanda through Thrive, or actually Amanda was at Primrose at this at where the kids went to school. Okay. She used to be director there. Oh. And once she left as once she didn't once she left as a director position when she left to go to a different school, that's when Shanann got her on Thrive and became friends. And okay. me and Nick started running. And okay. That's all right. Um, friends, Nick and come to support. Friend is that Lauren Arnold? Yep. Who's that? Uh, Shanann's high school friend. Okay. Lives out here. And how'd she find out about all this? Uh, Facebook. And so did you ask them who and where Shanann might be? Oh yeah, like Sh Shanann, uh, Lauren and Shanann were actually supposed to meet up that day. To do what? To meet up at the house to just pregnancy pal thing. At your house? Mm-hmm. What time? Don't know. Was there any communication about that? Not to me. How do you know? I, that was the first time I heard of it because she said that she was supposed to. They were supposed to meet up that day. Oh, when she came over at eight. Yeah. She said, "Holy cow, we were gonna meet together, something like that." Yeah, like that. She, she heard about everything on Facebook about Shannon being missing. She's like, "Yeah, her and uh, her and I were supposed to." Lauren said, "Her and I were supposed to meet up and do a little pregnancy pal thing." Is Lauren pregnant? Yes. Okay. First kid. Third. Okay. And so, oh, both third kids. So they were just going to meet up because they're expecting mothers. Yeah, they're probably just going to just hang out yeah. and probably okay. see each other in a while. Okay. I ain't worried about her though. Okay. Who are you worried about? Anybody that I know right now, like if they have not told me anything, it's it it drive me nuts. It's driving me nuts because like there's no way like the people that I know that have kids that could have helped her if if, if she's at somebody's house right now, like. They would have had to say something by now. With all this going on, there's no way they could have kept their mouth shut by now. So then who are you worried about? Honestly, like, I can't really say, like, if I'm worried about anybody right now as far as, like, any of her friends I know. Okay. All of them are showing, like, like their deep concern about what's going on right now. Okay. And I think, like, with that deep concern, that, that can't be faked. Okay. So then... Who are you worried about? That has to be somebody I don't know, honestly. Okay. The only thing that I can think of is something somebody I don't know. Okay. Does your gut tell you that Shanann and the kids walked out or that they were taken out? Yesterday I would have said they walked out. Today I would have said I'm, I'm leaning the other direction. Okay. Friends, Dave Cohen. Cologne. Cologne and Jeremy, Jeremy Lindstrom, Lindstrom combined to show support. Who are they? Dave Cologne, he, when I worked for Ford, he ran an auto body shop. He actually works for Boulder County Sheriff's Department now. Oh, 
Okay. And Jeremy Lindstrom, I worked. He was he worked in the sales department at Ford when I was a tech, mm-hmm. and he works in another Ford dealership now. Okay. Um, and Jeremy's Jeremy's a daughter. Just watched a kid over that this past weekend too, so we know them pretty well. Oh, um, what's his daughter's name? McKenna. Okay. Was she the one watching the kids the night before? Mm-hmm. Okay, I saw her name in a report or something. Um, how did that go with Dave and Jeremy? Oh, good. They're just you know just there just to show support, just you know chilling in the kitchen. Just two of them. And then that's me. Yeah, me and them. And Lauren and all them had gone by then. Oh yeah, everybody else has gone by then. Okay. Um, when they come over to show support, um, what are you guys talking about? Just talking just about like what could have happened. Like, do you think? She, do you think she could have gone somewhere? Do you think she was actually taken? Like, what, like, just random questions like that. Just, and then they're just talking about just other stuff to get my, to kind of get things off my head a little bit. Okay. All right. Um, 10 o'clock, I lay in bed and proceed to take calls from friends and family the rest of the night. How'd that go? I mean, just answering, uh, nobody could sleep as far as East Coast, anything like, you know, Addy, Sam. Who's Addy and Sam again? Addy, uh, they're leaders in Thrive. Okay. They're people that Shannon thought reaches up to. Okay. Have we talked to them? Oh, yeah, he talked to them on the phone. You have. I've talked, yeah, I've texted them. Okay. They're, it's all on there. Okay. And so the real live communication sense, we couldn't find Shannon. Yeah, like them. Okay. Have police talked to them? I believe so. Okay. Just on the phone? Yes. Are they in North Carolina? No, they're North like here. northeast. Northeast what? Like uh, Baltimore. Oh, okay. Yeah, over All right. there. All right. Who else calls? See, her mom. Talked to my parents. Talked to my sister. Talked to, texted with Kelly. That's another, she lives in New Jersey. Oh, who else? Jeremy, Dave. Uh, all those people. Okay. All right. Um, can we talk about something that's kind of hard to talk about? Um, so when I work investigations like this, I have to keep an open mind on everything. Okay. And part of keeping an open mind is listening to you talk about your wife and your marriage and the day she goes missing is the day that you guys have marital discord. Okay. So you can understand yeah. what I'm thinking about you. Yeah. What do you think about that? I, I, it makes me sick to my stomach, honestly. Like, I know, like, I've talked to a few of my friends. It's like, you know, this does not look good on you. I'm like, I know. It's like, people that, if people knew that we were having marital issues, they're going to look at me. Especially with the way everything looks. And it honestly just makes me sick to my stomach because this is something that I would never do. Ever. I, I, I know, like, you have to look at every, every vantage point. This is something I would never do to my kids or my wife. At all. I'm not sure, like what I could do like to make people believe that just because if they they think you were having marital discord they would automatically look at me but there's no I would harm anybody in my family at all I know we were having marital discord and we had that conversation that morning and then she goes and we have no idea where she is, or the kids. I promise you that is not, not, I had nothing to do with any of that. Are you telling me the truth? I am telling you the absolute truth. Why should I believe you? Because I am a very trustworthy person. And the people that do know me, they know how I'm a calm person. I am not an argumentative person. I am a person who is that's never going to be abusive or physical in any kind of relationship. I will never harm my kids. I will never harm my wife. 
I mean, you can talk. I mean, any, you can talk to any of my friends, any of her friends. They know me. They know I'm a low key guy. That's quiet. I'm. I'm not about confrontation. I'm not about anything that elevates to that level. I mean, you can tell, like, if someone like yells at me, screams at me, I just take it and I'm just, I just try to get it by the wayside and get it back to where it's cool. Like, just a cool conversation to where like none of that, none of that gets to that height. Because I am not that person. I've never been that person. Okay. Um, you can imagine it's my job. Okay. And I told you that tonight, we, you know, we would talk about things and might offend you. Might um, you know that we have to get to the bottom of this? Oh. You know that. Yeah. Okay. Would you take a polygraph? Sure. Okay. Would you take it tonight? If I, that's what you want me to do. Okay. I've never done one. I don't know like what it involves, but. You know where it is? Uh, from what I've seen, it goes on your finger. You okay. know what the purpose of one is? That's for a lie detector test. Okay. Um, all right. Well, why don't we do this? Let's take a little break. I'm going to come back in here because I have a lot more questions for you. Okay. Um, I want to remind you that tonight is voluntary. Okay. I can't keep you in here. I won't keep you in here. If you want to get right up and walk out of here, you can do that, okay? All right. Do you want to keep talking with me? I mean, I can. Okay. I mean, if that's what you want, I can keep talking. Okay. And you understand that I'm not arresting you right now. And you understand that you can walk out of here at any time. Okay. Okay. Having said that, I do want to talk to you. Uh, I have a lot more questions for you. Okay. Do you know where your wife is? I do not know where my wife is. Are you telling me the truth? I'm telling you the absolute truth. Okay. Let's take a tiny break. Um, get some water. Do you need to use the restroom? I don't know. Okay. There's some water or Gatorade actually if you need it. Um, I'm going to step out for a minute. I need to look over some of my notes. Uh, and I'm going to come right back in here. I'm not going to be out very long, okay? Sure. All right, I'll be right back. have everyone else. Um, I'm just going to keep this room for a little bit longer. So just shuffle people through the other rooms. All right. How are you feeling? Look at that picture. even though they were winter shoes. They were what? Winter shoes. <laughs> Those are her boots, aren't they? Shannon's gonna sell them off to uh, like that Facebook marketplace. Mm -hmm. She had them on the, on the window seal there. And when we got back from North Carolina, the SEC saw them sitting over there. And she proceeded to take them back and wear them every day since they got back. <laughs> no matter if it was 100 degrees outside or what, she left those shoes. 
she always loves those shoes. And Bella, she always wore some flip flops. She always will. She's just like, she loves that dress. She loves those flip flops. Cece loves that dress. She likes the buttons on the back. Is Cece short for something? Celeste. Celeste. Bella and Celeste. Mm -hmm. Tell me about them. You can see. Celeste, she's rampage. She's always the one that's just gung ho. She's always the one that's just like, she's off. She's either go or she's sleep. She's always the one growling. She's, she's always been, she's a tiger. Bella, she's the calm, the mothering one. She's the one that's always, Are you okay? Are you okay? You fine? Okay. She's just, she's just the sweetest little girl. She's the one that, favors me more, and Celeste is the one that favors Janan more. And the way I look at it, but you yeah. see some baby pictures of me and Bella, it's just like, boom, it's the other way around for when Celeste. When you say favor, do you mean look like? Yes. Oh, okay. Are they both daddy's girl? That one is. Uh, yeah, that's how it works, isn't it? It's because the first one, I wasn't really good at it yet. The second one, I knew what I was doing, and she bonded with me. Right from the start. Yeah. I remember when they wore that dress. She just wore that dress not too long ago. I unbuttoned the back of it so I could get her pajamas on. She's like, no, daddy, button. I got button. I got button. And Bella loves those spaghetti strap dresses. She likes long dresses. She was the girly girl. Always. Cece is just like, she went, I always like tried to put her in a Supergirl t-shirt and she loved it. Every time. Cece always be smiling though. Bella, you have to like really kind of it's like, you want some gum? Like <laughs> cheese. She said, if you said you want some gum, she would have been looking in this picture. See, she's always just smiling at the camera. They're gonna find them, right? I need your help. somebody sent me, or it was a side-by-side -side of Balance Less and Shenan, and it was a post to like one of the news companies. Okay. This was the picture they used of the girls. All right. Were you thinking about anything while I stepped out? It's not much I want to see these, these two girls and my wife again. Just I want them to come home. that um, when when children go missing in the FBI it's it's a lot like you see in the movies okay. we like to get every single one of our recent resources we like to call every agent and wake them up out of bed call them back from vacation we just really like to put a full force in mm. is that something that you're comfortable supporting yeah okay that means that I want to have as many eyes, as many hands, as many investigators, as many evidence people as we can possibly get looking at your house. Okay. Can we do that right this minute? If you want to. Okay. I'll stay out of the way if you want. Okay. Um, that's usually best. For you, for us, yeah. for everyone. Okay. Can you show me to go stay at my friend's house then? Um, is that an option? Yeah. Okay. That, I'm not sure if they're still outside. Okay. I'm not sure or not. All right. I don't have my phone. Oh. <laughs> I forgot to ask about your phone. Yeah. So okay. I don't have much to say. I had to take one here anyways. Okay. But um, concrete block. So what I might do then is in, I don't know, five, ten minutes, I might just step out for a very quick break and just say, guys, let's go in that house right now. Um, Two, three, eight, five. You did tell me that, and I did write it. The garage.
garage is 2385? The front door. The front door, 2385, and that latch or whatever is not going to get in our way? It's okay. not, it should be unlatched. Okay, good. All right. If um, it is, just call me. Then when they go in there, I want them to run a black light over everything. I want them to have to collect DNA. I want them to look for hair strands and DNA samples, and I want them to look at your stuff and your wife's stuff and your children's stuff and the garage stuff and the car stuff, all of it. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any problems with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so then I want them to do that sooner than later. I might step out here in a minute and just tell them the code and just let them know, guys, let's find how we can get these girls. Okay. Um, can we keep talking about some complicated things? Sure. Some things that are going to make you uncomfortable? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, and I think you know why I have to ask them. Okay. And it's a hard job. It's a hard job. It is a hard job. And I'm going to ask you one thing, and you're going to give me an answer, and then I'm going to ask it just a slight bit, bit different, and you're going to give me an answer, and then about 10 iterations of this, you might get annoyed, but I do that to make sure that we understand each other. Okay, is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have your daughters who are missing, we have your wives who's missing, okay? And that's the most important thing right now, okay? Um, do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So you've done very good in talking to me about this really hard conversation you guys had, okay? Very good. That's sometimes hard. And I understand why sometimes someone in your position says, uh, doesn't want to tell me about that. Because please go help me find my kids and you don't need to know about my, my marriage argument, okay? So I got to say, you've done very good at that. Um, and I need you to keep doing that. So I need to ask you about um, your marriage and uh, infidelity. Okay. Okay, tell me about it. I have never cheated on my wife. Okay. And I fully suspect she has never done that to me. Oh, okay. Like, she's always been a trustworthy person. I've always been a trustworthy person. I fully expect if we ever thought about straying another way, mm -hmm. that we would tell each other before it happened. I think that sounds ridiculous. Okay. Because in the history of the earth, nobody ever does that. Okay. I just, I just, I just that's what I would like to think. Okay. I mean, I mean, I know mistakes happen. Like, sure. You know. Yeah. But that's what I would, in my head, that's what I would okay. think would happen. I would hope would happen. Okay. But now, even though I think that sounds ridiculous, I if I was in your shoes, I'd say the exact same thing, and and I believe that. Okay. okay? But I kind of don't. And you can imagine in my job, I meet all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine that there are people who have Saturdays with their girlfriends and Sundays with their wives. Okay. Right? And they consider themselves to be very virtuous people. Okay? So, with that in mind, I don't care if there's been anything in your relationship. I just don't. Oh. And I'm not going to tell the news and I'm not going to tell anyone. But I do need to know. Oh. So... Is there anyone that you think that maybe your wife got close with? If she did, it was very like secret then if that was the case because okay. I I had no inkling. No at idea. All. No, okay. it, it wasn't even a sus suspicion. Okay, not one guy. Or girl. No, if, if, if that was the case, I mean, I didn't have one suspicion about okay. it. Like, it, if, if it happened, it wasn't even like, I wasn't aware. Nothing there was no radar. clue. There was no like, okay. you know, texting with the phone like back or like you know I walk in swipe type yeah. thing. I I didn't really have any of that. Okay. No perfume when she's going out with the girls. She always smells. She always sprays something. You on know her. what I mean? Yeah, like no, like, it wasn't. Perfume. It wasn't like you know like that one in a million perfume or okay. something like that. You know? All right. No late nights that surprised you. No. Okay. No, let's talk about you. Okay. Okay. Um, on your end, I gotta ask, what's her, what's her name? I don't have another one. You sure? I'm sure. Okay. Would you tell me if you did? Yes. Okay. Um, so, again, highly trained investigator over here, right? I see pictures of you from a few years ago, mm -hmm. and I see you standing before me now. Okay, you've, got, you've gotten pretty fit. Okay. You can imagine when guys start cheating or want to cheat, that's what happens. Yes. So tell me about it. 
that I did not cheat on my wife. Okay. Not Thrive helped me. I went from 245 pounds to... You bump. were 245? I was 245 Jesus. pounds. Jesus. You look great, man. Thank you. And I'm 185, 180 right now. Mm-hmm. And I've been eating cleaner, just trying to... The last, the last little bit. Thrive has helped me a lot, but to maintain it and try to eat cleaner has really helped me as well. Okay. And I've got to imagine that maybe there was a girl that inspired that? No. No? No. Okay. Why are you falling out of love? After the last five, the last five weeks, like being by myself and being able to be myself again, I couldn't be myself around Shannon anymore. Why not? It was like I was walking just like, if, like you know, like walk on eggshells type thing. It's kind of like you don't, you feel like you're always doing something that's wrong. It's like you, you feel like you're never like, doesn't make, does that make sense at all? The timing doesn't make sense to me. Okay. But like, it's like, like if you can't be yourself around your wife, who can you be yourself around? Why couldn't you be yourself around your wife? I just felt like I'd always have to change who I was because I, I was always about, I mean, I was doing the laundry, I do, I do everything. Mm-hmm. Like I do everything that I could for her, everything. Mm-hmm. And then like the last five weeks, I was just like, I was just, you know, just being myself, just doing me. And I just thought to myself, like, one of my buddies, Mark, he lives out in San Diego, it was like one big test that he learned, like he, he was divorced at one point and he was like, so if you could picture yourself, like if you could picture your wife and she was with someone else, would you get jealous? I was like, at this point I have to say no. And he was like, well, there's your answer. Like if you love her, it would be the different answer. When did you start falling out of love? It, have, it, it wasn't in the last five weeks. It's been an ongoing process for probably about a year. Why? I just felt like everything that we had when we first started dating and met, like we met in 2010, everything, you know, your new relationship sparked, everything's hot, everything's great. Get married, everything's still great. And then like, you know, people just fall out of love. And that's, that's where I was. Like, I just felt like over the last year, I thought that like, okay, maybe, maybe this is just like a phase. Maybe it's, you know, like just, you know, this is what happened. Like you've been with somebody so long, maybe like, you know, the spark isn't there, just reunited somehow, some way. But, you know, our conversations weren't the same. Like when we were apart, like everything was just like, you know, short and it was just like, it, nothing felt right anymore. The disconnection was there and it just never felt right anymore. But why? <laughs> it wasn't there. Like, I just didn't feel it. Like, it was like I didn't have that passion anymore. Why not? I, I, honestly, I really couldn't, I can't tell you. Like, it, the passion, I, I didn't feel it in my heart anymore. Like, I really I really can't, like, just give you a definitive answer other than that. It's like my heart wasn't in it. I gotta tell you, that sounds I, like a load of horseshit to I, me. I, 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 I know. What about the girls? Bella and Celeste are light of my life. I'd do anything for those girls. I'd step in front of a bullet, step in front of a train for those girls. It doesn't add up to me, then why did the spark die? The relationship between me and Shannon has nothing to do with the love I have for these girls. I mean, the love for these girls, these, I mean, they're the light of my life. I would do anything for them. Mm-hmm. But me and Shannon talked about like, if we separated or if we stay together, like what's best for the kids? Like, do we stay together for the kids? That, you look it up, it doesn't work that way. Like it might cause more issues for the kids later on down the road with their psyche or personality or something. They know when they can, they get older, they see like, oh, mom and dad don't sleep in the same room anymore. Like what's going on? I think. Okay. If you had to guess, if you had to put your finger on it, if you had to, you know, why do two people that are hot and heavy that have kids that they love, what happened? I mean, you can't take the kid into the fact into the factor because, like, when the love for your half your kids is going to be like exponential. I mean, it, it'll, no matter what, that will never die. Mm-hmm. 
because those are your kids. Mm -hmm. That'll never die. Between you and your wife, like, the love that you have for each other, like, from start to finish, like, from right when you started to where you're in your, if your relationship ends, like, some, like, when you're in that type of relationship, you're with somebody for that long, something happens. Like, something, like, if it's just conversations or if it's just, like, you know, I mean, it's not attractiveness at all. Like, it's just a connection that isn't there. Like, you know when you can, like, look at someone and or just, like, put your forehead to their forehead and you just, like, hold them. You know what each other's thinking. That's a connection. I didn't have that connection anymore. Okay. What do I do to help you walk out of this room and not look like the person who's responsible? You have to trust me that when I tell you that these two beautiful girls right here, I did nothing to them and to my beautiful wife, I did nothing to her. Like you have to trust me and believe me. Like I know you don't know me as a per you, you've known me for like two and a half, three hours. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what your opinion is. But you have to realize that these two beautiful girls right here and my wife, I had nothing to do with the disappearance. Like, they vanished. They were taken. Someone take, has taken them. They're safe somewhere. We don't know. I had nothing to do with, these, with, this, with this act of, like, evil cruelty, whatever has happened here. Because my love for these two girls and my wife, like, I don't want anything to happen to them. I've never wanted anything to happen to them. No matter if me and my wife separate or not, or divorce or anything, I never wish harm on anybody, on a human being in general. Okay. Like, just, just seeing that picture, like, I need them, I, I want them just to run through that front door and just grab me, mm -hmm. or just bear, or just tackle me, knock me to the floor, bust my head, I don't care. The amount of love I have for my family is exponential, and I, it's never gonna die. Okay. And they need, I want them back. Okay. I have to have them back. Tell me about a normal day in your house. So like one when I'm actually at home all day. You know, let's pick a day. Okay, two months, two months ago. Let's yeah. pick a Saturday. Let's pick a school day. A school day. Okay. So, well, I'm usually at work. Okay. But so usually so on their lives and your lives. Okay. So school or school day. So I'll get up about four o'clock. I'll go down, work out for maybe about an hour or so. At your house? Yeah, it's a, a weight bench in the basement. Okay. So get down with that. Come back upstairs by about five o'clock. I'll eat some breakfast, make some eggs, cottage cheese or something like that. Everybody's still sleeping. I'll make the girls milk. I'll make Cece's milk. I'll bring it upstairs. Bella's usually kind of iffy on milk in the morning, so I okay. just fill up the water bottles, mm -hmm. put it in the refrigerator. Make sure the backpacks have change clothes, their hat, and if it's like a swim, like a water day or something, make sure they have water shoes in there. Make sure they have sunscreen. Make sure that all that in their backpacks. Change of clothes for what? In case they have an accident. Like, oh, okay. Because they're little. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, not much Bella, but Celeste. Sure. Um, and make sure they have their little blankies if they, whenever they go nap. Okay. They have all that with them. I have that all laid out, and then I go to work. So when Shanann, well, the kids dictate when Shanann wakes up, and usually, usually it's Bella. She'll come in there, lay in the bed with her, and then Celeste. She'll wake up, they'll just come in and lay in the bed with her, and they'll watch cartoons for for a little while at least. Mm -hmm. And probably about 6.30, they'll get up, they'll channel, well, she'll probably be in the bathroom at this point in time while they're watching, because she, Celeste has her milk at that point in time, and she's just chilling in the bed. Okay. Shanann's getting ready, she'll probably take a shower, put makeup on, all that kind of stuff, and then takes the kids over into their rooms, gets them dressed, out of their pajamas, and their, Bella has a school uniform, CC didn't have one yet, so um, get them dressed, um, go downstairs, have breakfast, 
CC will probably have cereal, Bella, probably uh, some like cinnamon toast. Mm -hmm. um, have that. They may have, might have a little snack on the way to school, maybe some dry cereal or something. Okay. Cut down, put them in the cars, and go to school. Mm -hmm. And then they'll stay at school usually until about 4 o'clock, 4.30. I'll usually be home by then. I can go pick them up. I go in there, sign them out, get them in the car, drive back. They'll be screaming the whole way because they want mommy. Because mm -hmm. that's what they do after a long day of school. Mm -hmm. And get home. Shannon will have something for the girls, being whatever they want. Either be, it might be pizza, sometimes they want french fries, sometimes they want chicken nuggets, sometimes kibasi, just like, mm -hmm. just whatever. Most of them, they have butter noodles, they love that. Okay. So, sit them at the, wash your hands, sit them at the table, and they'll eat their dinner. And then, usually, go upstairs, take a shower with them, get them all washed up, get them dried off, get some motion, get their pajamas on, back downstairs, have a little nighttime snack, they'll pick it, you know, Cheez-Its, a little okay. wafer, or something mm -hmm. like that. And they'll sit in their little couches and they'll watch a cartoon until about seven o'clock. And then between six thirty and seven, we're giving them their medicine and any medicine they need at that point in time. If one of them has a fever or okay. whatever else, and then brush your teeth upstairs. Cece gets an overnight diaper. Bella doesn't. And read a book. Cece usually wants a uh, tiger, the tiger book, mm -hmm. and I read that to her. We growl at the last part. Mm -hmm. Turn the rain machines on. But is, is that what you said? Choose your tiger? Yes. Does that come to mind? Yes. Okay. And then turn the rain machines on, give both kiss goodnight. Cece wants me to put her to bed, Bella wants Shannon to put her to bed, and close the door and night night. Okay. All right. we talk a little bit about um, the morning that they disappeared? Mm -hmm. um, we already talked about 4 o'clock alarm, prep until 4.15, correct me if I'm wrong, 4.15 this challenging talk starts, you leave somewhere around 5.30ish, 5.20 something, 5.27, um, and then what, what was your day like? So I went out to locations. Where's that? Uh, the oil locations. Oh, uh, locations. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I worked out on those old locations until was it twelve ten? That's when I got the doorbell visitor notification. What do you do out there? What do you do at work? Oh yeah, operate the uh, oil and gas locations we have running. Oh okay. Yeah, like either maintenance or just like inspections or like trying to get them running again type of thing. And are you the guy with the wrench or are you the boss? I'm I'm one of the field coordinators. Okay. So like our uh, the area we have is like really like it's really big. So like I have. Me and two other guys are field coordinators. Then we have two rovers, which they like go around to up the, the area and they help other operators. And we have six route operators. Okay. So the field coordinators, we kind of, kind of get everybody like, all right, this is what we're going to do today, type okay. thing, and disperse. Okay. Type thing. So then, when you left at five thirty, which location did you go to? So the survey three nineteen, which is that's a well location. Is that a well location? Yeah, we have the Servi 1029. Servi? Yeah, it's just well names. Servi? Yeah. Like S-E-R-V-Y? Yeah. Okay. And then there's uh, 1129, and we stayed the 1029 most of the day. And so these are numbers I don't even understand. Uh, there's, there's like section number, well number type things. Okay. That's how, they, that's how they name them. Okay. So then it might be that, God forbid, two weeks from now, we're still looking for them. And it's going to be very important that... All of this can jar your memory, right? Yeah. So I'm taking notes. So survey what? So we have the 1129. Where'd you go first? The 319. 319. Where and what crossroads would that be? Oh, it, it's out in a ranch. Oh, okay. It's, yeah. Survey 319. Okay. Yeah. How long are we at survey 319? Probably about an hour. Okay. Just telling the boys what to do. I was out there checking a uh, line that we had leaking it for on Friday. Okay. Okay, and that took about an hour. Yep. Then what? Went to the 1129. Okay. Again, is that just the middle of a ranch? Yeah, it's the same ranch. Okay. Oh, so how far away? Not far. Walking distance? No. Oh, walking. <laughs> That's yeah. a big ranch. Yeah, yeah, you don't drive there. Okay. How long were you at 1129? Probably about 20 minutes or so. Doing what? I was just checking, this, just doing an inspection over there. See if I can get the welder to run again. Okay. This one, you have to kind of run, man run manually. Okay. And then where? The 1029. We were there most of the rest of the day. Doing what? Replace. We're trying to get a pumping unit to pump back up, and stuffing box rubbers. 
uh, were leaking and the rods were smoking, so we had to replace them. That's what took a very long time. And how long were you out there? Uh, the rest until 12, 10. So six, seven hours? Oh, yeah. Like, five, yeah. Six, okay. At least like five hours, it seemed like five, six And were there people with you? Oh, yeah, there's people with me. Like, mm-hmm. there's, I gave them the names. Okay. There was a police note. Yeah, Troy McCoy, Chad McNeil, Melissa Parrish, Cody Roberts, they were all out there with me. Okay. And you said you called home at 7.30 or so? I texted at 7.40. Okay. okay. And that was something like a, where are you? Yeah, I couldn't go back that far on my phone to see when I called, but I did call her two or three times during that. And why then was that a better part of the day for you to text? Yeah, because like I was at that point in time, like I was actually trying to call my foreman and everything else, like just to, like just to talk to him, see, so tell him what I found, and it kept just like it wouldn't ring out there. What you found? What do you mean? No, the the line that was leaking. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, like we had a bypass line, mm. back pressure line that was tied to a down no, this down come on to an oil tank and it was leaking on the ground. Okay. But like, I was not getting any phone calls through, so that's why I was texting. Okay. clues, things that we need to get and we need to use, the methods that we need to do to find them are going to start getting blown away by weather, getting re-recorded over themselves at the surveillance store that's going to tell us. All of that is going to disappear, okay? And that's why we're going to spend so much time today, tomorrow, as, as in the front as we can, right? You can also imagine that every day that goes by, We're going to be looking for the man who did this, okay? And you can imagine that we're going to inc- include you as that man. Oh. So, let's talk about that. I think that you're trying to put on a brave face because you're a man and you're a father and you're a husband. I can tell that there's just something you're not telling me. And I'm not sure what it is, and I don't know why that is. I don't know why you're not telling me, but there's something that's making you a little bit uncomfortable tonight. I just don't believe some of the things you're telling me. Okay, I just don't. I simply do not believe you. What makes you think? What have I said that makes you not believe me at all? This just doesn't make sense to me, it doesn't add up. So can we talk about two Chris's? Okay. Two Chris's. The tale of two Chris's? Okay. Yeah. Um, and you need to help me know which Chris I'm looking at today and which Chris you really are. So Chris number one is right here, right? And Fell out of love with his wife. Okay. Started wondering what it might be if he didn't have a wife to take care of and a girls to take care of. Spent some time alone. Liked that time alone. Came home. May or may not have had a conversation about how to get out of this marriage or how to fix it, but probably how to get out of it. Is looking at a bachelor pad in Brighton and did something terrible to his wife and kids. And that may have been an accident. 
and I think it was an accident. That's not the Chris you're looking at right now. No. Not the Chris you're looking at is the man who loves these kids and loves his wife and will never, ever, ever do anything to harm them. That's the Chris you're looking at right now. The Chris you're looking at right now wants these kids and his wife back at his house right now. That's the Chris you're looking at. Why didn't you call 911? I didn't think anything was wrong. I think you knew what was wrong. I did not know what was wrong, sir. I promise you that. What do you think it's going to look like when someone finds out that it was not you that called 911? Everybody's going to have their own perception about what's going on here, but I know my wife. I know that sometimes she doesn't text me back. I know that happens. I've, I've, I've been that. It's happened multiple times throughout many days. If she's busy with work, it doesn't happen. That's why it didn't register for me that day. We're back to his tale of two Chris's Chris. Okay. There's a Chris who cares. Um, I care. I promise. Tell me about the call to your daycare. To the Primrose? I called them to see if the girls were there. They said they weren't there. Okay. I told them since they weren't there, just put them back on the waiting list. That's not what you told them. I told them that we were going to sell the house. We're going to put it on the market and we probably won't be in the area anymore. That's two different things, Chris. Well, I wanted them to be back on, on I put them on, on the waiting list since they weren't there. Why weren't they there? I don't know. Where were they going to go? They went to a, Shanann took them to a friend's house. Why wouldn't they go to daycare? I am not sure. Uh, honestly, sir, I am not sure. It's hard for me as a father to talk to you about this. I know. Not because it's a hard issue to talk about. It's because I'm worried about your daughters under your care. You shouldn't have to worry about them under my care. Okay. I watched them all weekend. I went to went to a pool party, went to a pool party at Jeremy Lindstrom's house. It's like, I love those kids with all my heart. And nothing in this world would ever make me do anything to these kids or my wife. When you walk out of this room, there's nothing I can say to a room full of police officers that's going to convince them that you have nothing to do with this. I know. You know what they think. I, I know what all that, all of that, yeah. Here's a guy who didn't call 911, who woke his wife, wife up at a ridiculous hour because he was so guilty about something that he had to get it off his chest and say, I don't love you anymore, I'm leaving you. That didn't go well. Okay, so what happened? She told me she wanted to wake her up before I left. That's why I didn't just wake her up, like, just to tell her this. Like, I woke her up. That's what she wanted to do, and we talked. Like, usually at 4 a.m., I wake up, I go down and work out. This day, I wanted to talk to her about this. I love these girls. I love these girls so much. And this picture right here, Celeste and Bella, those are my life. I'm helped make those kids. There's nothing in my life that means more to me than these kids. Nothing. Kids, that's that's your life. That's your lifeline. That's everything. Like you make kids, they they come first before anything. 
kids, spouse, family. That's what it's always been. Nothing you've told me tonight makes sense. Nothing you've told me tonight feels like the truth. Can we start over? Sure. I think that there's something that happened that got maybe a little bit out of control. There was no fight. There was nothing physical. It was a mo it was a conversation. There was there's no we didn't raise our voice. Nothing. I promise to you that, sir. There was there was nothing physical with this conversation. What was the last thing? What was the last thing you saw about your daughters? Last thing I saw, like when I left. What did it look like? saw him in the monitor as it was switching back and forth. What's the last thing you saw with your wife? She was laying back in bed as I was walking out the door, walking out the bedroom door. Okay. find the guy who took him. What do you think we should do? Honestly, like, they're going to come home safe, correct? When you find the guy. When we find the guy, they're going to come home. Life in prison would be the, that's what I, that's what I would think with two kids that are involved. What if he hurt them? Did they pop? Did, did, I'm not sure if like that penalty is even used. Is it used in Colorado? I am not even sure. What is a death penalty? Okay. Um, I mean, like, if these kids are not alive, like, there's no, there's nothing you could do to, to cope with that, to make me cope with that, if those kids are not okay. your plan after you guys separated? Try to get an apartment. Yeah. You're fine? I would then we just go our separate ways. Like I would probably get an apartment. She would we try to sell the house first, of course, mm -hmm. before we could do anything with that. Mm -hmm. And hopefully like try to get both get an apartment somewhat close. Okay. So that like it's a 50-50 thing, like because I was gonna go on an eight and six schedule in September. Okay. And then I would have six days off, and it would be perfect to, you know, not have kids for half, and she'd have half, and that would be, that would work. All right. Um, tonight's been pretty intense, I can imagine. How are you feeling? <laughs> I've, I've slept like two hours last night, so I'm like running on empty right now. But I know, I can see it. So why don't we do this? I'm sure you don't mind if we take a break for the night. Um, and I'm sure that you are um, feeling some of the pressure from me. Okay? You're doing your job. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't grill you a little bit, right? Okay. I've seen you tell two different guys. Like, <laughs> honestly, like I've seen like where you're smiling and I've seen where it's it's different. Yeah. I, I can, yeah. Okay. You're doing your job though. Like I can't yeah. fault you for anything you've asked. So can I make a commitment to you? Yes. Okay. I'm going to commit to you that we're not going to stop working until we find them. Okay. Okay. And I want to commit to you that there is going to come a time when you're going to feel this pressure from other people. I'm not the only one who thinks that there's a possibility you have something to do with this. Like another FBI agent, like pressure, or like just like 
Everyone. Okay. Everyone, Chris. Okay. Have you ever watched the news and said, two girls and a pregnant woman go missing? Okay, and if that's all you heard, what do you think the public thinks? Husband. Husband. Okay. So, I'm going to make a commitment to you, okay? I'm going to commit to you that I'm going to be your guy, okay? I'm going to be your guy that handles the investigation, okay? And I'm going to be your guy that you can come to, okay? Because I hope that you realize I'm, I'm a nice guy. Um, tonight we had to talk about some tough things, but I hope that you know that I did it respectfully. I think that you can see that. Um, and so, as we go on through tonight, the hours, the days, and I hope we don't get to hours or days. I hope it's minutes, right? Until this is over. Yes. But just in case it's not, I want you to know that I wanted to be in this room tonight. I wanted to talk to you. Okay. Okay. And I hope that you want to talk to me. Okay. When you have questions, when you have concerns, I want you to call uh, the detective that you work with and I want you to call me. Okay. I want you to know that if you have a question, if you think we're not doing something enough or well enough, I want you to say, I gotta call Graham. I gotta call Dave. Correct. Okay. When you need to have a night to yell at somebody and maybe have a good cry, I want you to call me. Okay. Okay. I can't imagine what you're going through. I just can't. I realize today has been the whirlwind from Yesterday I thought she was just at somebody's house, and today with the drones, the police, and the news, I, I, I look like a scene out of a, just, just a scene out of a movie. That's too much. It's too much for one person to handle. My dad's flying in tomorrow. Good. Okay. So you have your dad. Who else do you have? Uh, Nick and Amanda, Dave, Jeremy. Okay. Now, you only know me for three hours, but I want to be part of that team. Okay. Okay? I want to be part of the team that helps you, and I want you to be part of my team. Okay. Okay? Tonight, when you go home, one of two things is going to happen. You're going to pass out because you're so tired. Okay? And that's probably not going to be what happens. Your head's going to go race. Okay? So when tonight, when you lay down and your head starts racing, there's going to be things that come to your mind. Okay? This always happens. Always, it's very natural. You're gonna say, I wonder why he asked me that, okay? You're gonna say, screw him, how dare he accuse me, okay? You're gonna say, I wonder if they thought of this, okay? And then you're gonna say, I probably should have told him something, or this or that, okay? Those are the most common things. Um, when those thoughts come to your head, I want you to call me. I want you to call Dave, okay? Um, it's fair for your mind to race. So I want you to call me, okay? You need a lifeline. You need someone you can call. I want to be that guy, all right? Um, and I want you to know that if I didn't accuse you a little bit, you'd probably wonder if I was good at my job. Well, I, one, right. of, my, one of my buddies, he, he just straight with me. He was like, dude, I'll just be a no veil, like, None of this looks good. So right. It's like he's like I'm not gonna accuse anybody, but like I'm not gonna be like he has his wife and their friends. It's like they won't talk to you right now. Yeah. I'm like I don't, so I don't know. So we had this Chris, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the other Chris. He's just right here. Okay. I can see that you're a good man, right? You don't have beautiful daughters with good clothing that look well fed, right? Children that are unhappy don't smile like this, okay? I mean, those are beautiful kids. Those kids have a good dad, and I know it. I just see a picture, it's on my phone. Yeah. It's a better one, but it's just, I'll show it to you, but it's. Those kids have a good dad. Good dad that feeds them and that loves them. I was very impressed when I asked you how their day was about how involved you are. Okay. See, you some, see me on the weekend. A lot of dads don't get second pairs of clothes and cook eggs and give them snacks at night. You know, a lot of, a lot of men, that's woman's work, right? I don't like to get involved. But you're not that kind of guy. Okay. So, 
Chris, can you just look at me for one second? If there is something that happened, it's okay. It really is. Okay. okay. If something that happened with these girls, if there was an accident, if there's something you're afraid to tell me, it's okay. Okay. If there's something that happened with your wife, it's okay. Okay. You can always tell me. And if you want to talk 15 minutes after you leave, I'll answer the phone. If you want to talk in the middle of the morning, I'll answer the phone. Okay. What I want to happen is, if that's what happened, if there was something that got out of hand, if there's something you know, I want you to go home and I want you to know that I'm the guy you can talk to, okay, who's not going to judge you. I have kids. Sometimes I, sometimes I joke with my wife, I just need two weeks alone, you know? Like when you told me about your four to five weeks alone, I was like, wow, that sounds like a slice of heaven, right? Sometimes it's a bit much. Okay, so let's do this. I mean, we're going to take a little break. Um, I'm going to help organize the search of your house tonight. Okay. Okay. I still want to do that. Okay. I was just going to go to my friend's house and okay. just get out of your way. Okay. Now. Hopefully they still now listen, awake. I can't tell you that we have to do it. Okay. I don't. I. If you want. I. If. Like you said, we got, it rained tonight. Yeah. Like hard. Like it blew four trash cans in my yard. Let's get on it, right? Like it's whatever is there is there, and I want okay. it found. I want to do that. I want to talk to you again tomorrow. Okay. Okay. I want you to get a good night's sleep and a good breakfast and a good workout. Whatever you got to do, whatever your morning routine is. My dad flies in in the morning about like eight or nine. Okay. So. What time should we plan on doing that? Can I get him back home first and then come here? <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. And listen, uh, of course, take right. your time, get settled in. So what time is he flying? He should be here around 8 or 9. 8 or 9? Yeah. Okay. He's from flying from North Carolina. Here's what I would love to have happen. He's flying in 8 or 9. you got to go get him. you got to get him back. Uh, he's going to want to know everything. Yeah. Okay. He's your oh, dad. Yeah. Okay. He's called me like ten times a day. That's going to take forever. And he's going to have questions and comments and concerns. Okay. Um, I would love for you and me as a team to, to talk tomorrow, to do a polygraph tomorrow, and move past all of it. Okay. okay? Move past me wondering about Chris. Me about wondering which Chris I'm talking to. I want to move past it. I just want to get it behind us. Okay. And then our talks are going to be a lot more comfortable than they were tonight. So can we say that tomorrow at 11 o'clock? Okay. We can do a polygraph? Here. Here. Okay. okay. Uh, and there might be little tweaks. It might be at a different office out of this. We're not going to okay. try to rock your world too much. We know what you're going through. Okay. okay. I want to get that done. I want to just move past it. Okay. Okay. Can we do that? Yeah. Okay. 11 o'clock? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any questions for me? No, like... I have your, have your phone number, yeah. so that like if his flight does get delayed, I can call you. Yeah, absolutely. You have Dave's, right? Yes. So you based that up here? I am. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know that's a 24-hour number, okay? Okay. Let's make that happen tomorrow. Okay. okay. One of the one of the things that makes us wonder about which Chris again is when you don't answer the phone. Okay, so if I call you, I get it. You're on the phone. You're with your dad. You're in the drive-through. You know whatever it is. I get it. Okay. Um, if you go a whole day without calling me back, oh no, that's not gonna okay. happen. Can we promise each other we'll answer the phone? Yeah, like I'm not going a day. Like if if I'm with if I'm with my dad or like I have other calls coming in, like I'm okay. getting back to you. Okay. There's no yeah. Okay. Your dad's coming tomorrow. Were you guys planning on staying here? Oh yeah, like he's gonna stay at my house. Like okay. that, that was the thing. Like I don't want to be at that house by myself. Okay. That's why I'm staying with my friends tonight. Okay. Because I can't be right. in that house again. Like, Have you already packed for your friends tonight? I got it in my car. Okay. I was I, I was actually about almost there when Dave okay. called me. I was like, okay. yeah, I'll turn around. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, you're good. I was like, I'd rather okay. get this rolling right here. So. All right. All right. Um, I hope you realize that I'm someone that you can call and trust mm -hmm. and 
Again, I put the screws to you, but that's because I need to. Oh, no. Okay. You did a really good job tonight. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have any other questions for me? No. Just... Okay. We gotta find these two and my wife. I'll show you the other picture on my phone. Okay. Let me go see... They just my phone. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go see where they are with the phone. Okay. And then we're gonna... Um, if you're gonna go to your friend's house, then we might not include you very much at the house, at your house. Yeah, that's okay. Um, I'm gonna try to leave you alone for the night, but if we get somewhere, um, if we can't get in the house, if we find something we gotta talk to you about tonight, and I'll I can't, my, and I can't wait, on. yeah, I'll we might call you again. Okay. okay. All right. Anything else? Just gotta find them. No. Okay. I know. I know. Um, I appreciate you coming in tonight. Mm -hmm. All right. Give me a few minutes. Right. A few minutes. I'm down your gate right now. figure this out um, without sending you home with a bunch of questions, right? Gotcha. We'd like to be able to tell you this is our plan for tomorrow. So, so far it looks like um, some of the things we need to do at your house are better at night and some of them are better in the morning. Okay. So we're, we're going to probably split the difference and start very early in the morning. Um, now, between now and very early is probably about three, four hours, right? Okay. Um, is it possible for you to not go home? during that time to your house? Okay. Can you go straight to your friend's? I'm going to check my friend's right here. Okay. And then when you go straight to your friend's house, um, is it okay to ask that you don't go back to your house? You just call me and give me a word. Okay. That's All right. Safe. Okay. So we'd like to be able to... I don't want to do two searches at your house because that will say to the public, oh boy, the FBI is really interested in him. And then that's going to be a storm coming at you that we don't want. Okay. So... We'll do that. We're gonna send you home, go to your friend's house, get a good night's sleep, um, pick up your dad at eight or nine. Yeah, just okay. have to verify when he leaves at like five in the Eastern morning. time. He already has a ticket? Yeah. Do you know what, when he's flying in, like what he's flying in on, or the company, or? I told him to go to United Airlines, it was cheaper, but I'm okay. not sure, because the kept, price kept changing on him. He bought his ticket? Yeah. Okay, what's his name? Ronnie Watts. Ronnie Watts, okay. Um, so we'll send you to your friend's house, you know, again, I can't tell you, you cannot go in your house, but I'd like you to not go in your house, um, if you can do that. And then we'll start early in the morning. I'll check in with you at around eight or nine. Okay. Um, you'll probably be on your way to the airport if not already there. And then can you, after that, can you just come straight here? Yeah. Let's, let's talk, let's get everything out of the way. Let's get done with your search. And then we're just gonna, you know, send you on your way and we'll get back to this Chris, the good Chris, right? Okay. Um, I'm sorry you have to go through all this. It's part of the process. Okay. So you guys going to stay in my house overnight, or? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. Um, but actually, yes. <laughs> okay. They, there will be someone at your house. Okay. Uh, there will be a patrol officer in the front and in the back. Um, and then, yeah, they're going to make sure. Well, and the reason is we don't want anyone else going to your house either. Okay. Some nosy reporter, some nosy neighbor, some. The reporters will be there because they, they're, they're, they're just cycling in and doing some. Yeah. Yeah. spots here. Right, yeah. So, but we also want to make sure that they're not sticking a camera in your window and, you know, doing some sort of weird piece about your house and your home. And so, yeah, there will be, we'll make sure that no one else gets in there. Um, and yeah, I mean, they always, there will be someone in the front and the back. So, um, and yeah, and if you do need to go to your house, don't go without telling us. Oh, no, no, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to get pig piled by a bunch of patrol officers. Um, does, that, does that all sound yeah. good? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, give me two more minutes and then we'll walk you out. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Oh, do your girls do you have, do your girls travel with headphones? They had they had them on the first trip there, but I didn't see them wear them on the back. What they look like? Like little like little unicorn type things. Over like, the ear? Yeah, like they like kind of slide over. Okay. Were they like colorful? Or gray, gray and pink, I think. 
Do they ever take them shopping or anything? No. No, no that's the only time they ever used them. Oh, okay. So if your if your uh, wife was gonna like walk around with them, she wouldn't be holding them with headphones. No, because they just strap over and they have like a little plug. Okay. Um, is your family lactose intolerant? No. Do you ever buy a lactose intolerant milk? That's two percent. Just two percent regular stuff. Okay. All right. Um, we're just explaining. I mean, you can imagine a thousand people are calling in right now, so we're just narrowing stuff down. Okay. Yeah, give me two more minutes. All right. Hey Chris, thanks for yeah. coming in. Yep. Um, so we've been doing some other things while you were here, um, and we've had people calling in stuff okay. like that. So there was a, a sighting at Walmart. Um, one of your kiddos is Bella the oldest. Yes. Sh she had long hair. Oh, well, if if you let the curls down. How long? So it, the curls would probably come like right here. Okay. So this is a picture from surveillance. Can you see that? Here you go. Yeah, it's just the hair color looks a little off. Yeah. I mean, look how long that braid is. Is that look? Yeah. Is that look right? No, that braid's too long. Does it look like your wife? Hair's too long. Okay. Okay. That's what I thought too. So. Okay. Yeah, the hair looks a little too long. We're trying, buddy. Sure. We are trying. Every angle. Yeah. So. That would be CC in the back, though. <laughs> that was her. Yeah. And that's where she would sit? Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chilling. Bella rolling the roost up there? Yes. Well, come for something in there, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because Bella, so really. That's the picture I was talking about. Yeah. And this is CC, right? Yep. And that's Bella. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. I was on the 4th of July. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, this is not much different, but it's got a lot longer hair. Yeah. Yeah. Longer not her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank All you. All right. We're ready. Do I take this or no? This is. Uh, please leave all that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you're um, when you get your dad tomorrow, just come on in. He's gonna have a bunch of questions. I'll talk to everyone. Bring him in. Let's talk. Yeah. I'll bring him here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here we, you you can grab him up wherever you need to go. Okay. But you, but you probably don't want to come here. Trying to say the right thing, but then putting this on. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Are those on? What's that? Are those on? Digital? End of recording, approximately 11.06, August 14th, Tuesday, 11.06 p.m.